After 41 years of saving lives, dealing with disasters, and anticipating the unexpected, Woodbury County's Director of Emergency Services, Gary Brown, is retiring tomorrow. Tonight, we take a look back at a very eventful career. I wandered in one day and said, hey, I'd like to volunteer. And, and uh, a few weeks later, I was on the, on the service and being trained. With his EMT license already in hand, that's how retiring Woodbury County Emergency Services Director Gary Brown began his career in 1980. By 1982, he was full-time. By 87, he was named the director. During the years, there were water rescues, searches for bodies, and many other emergencies, but none bigger than what happened in 1989 the crash of United Flight 232 at the Sioux Gateway Airport. At first, when you saw it, the way it tumbled down, you're like, nobody's gonna survive this. We went out there and we started seeing survivors and, and you just go into a mode. Just a year before, there had been a full-scale drill practicing for such an emergency because the airport was along a major flight path. 112 people out of 184 passengers died. Brown says something good needed to come out of that tragedy. And that led him to do more than 800 speaking engagements. They don't have a book of airplane crash, follow these instructions. So us going out and sharing what we learned uh, was extremely beneficial to other communities and I think kind of healing for us as well. Three, two, Roger. He's the power back now. About two and a half years after the crash, a made for TV movie called A Thousand Heroes premiered in Sioux City starring acting icon Charlton Heston as pilot Al Haynes and Richard Thomas, whose role loosely resembled that of Brown. You can't tell everybody's story in a two-hour movie. Uh, so they took a lot of liberties with different stories and combined several people's stories together. In 1994, a blast at the Terra Industries fertilizer plant near Salix killed four, injured a number of others, and forced the evacuation of around 2,000 people as a roughly 15-mile cloud of ammonia hung over the area. And the Missouri River flood of 1993 was just a precursor to the summer-long flood of 2011. Fortunately, it was a slow-rolling disaster. I mean, we, we didn't have a dam break and all of a sudden flood. We had a time to kind of walk into it, which really helped a lot. But it was the death of a young girl trying to cross the street in Morningside that still haunts Brown the most. It's more vivid to me what was going on with her in the middle of that street that day than the memories of the crash of 232 or floods or chemical spills or anything else. That moment is locked into my brain and will be forever. Brown takes great pride in playing a part in establishing an address system for rural residences in the county. It's 911, where's your emergency? An enhanced 911 system that can pinpoint where a call is coming from. The Starcom radio system that allows area emergency and law enforcement to communicate with each other. The creation of the Security Institute and an operations center at Western Iowa Tech. And the addition of highly trained emergency medical services personnel. You know, we used to just transport our patients in pain. Now we can do something about that pain. As he leaves this important job behind, Gary Brown's hope for the future is that the community support he's seen through the years continues. You know, when 232 crashed or any disaster that we've had, we've never had to go look for anything. All we've had to do is ask. Brown adds he owes a special debt of gratitude to his wife of 25 years, Kathy, and also to the local military for its support during all of those years.